Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Eternal Flames. My name's Blaze and welcome back to Thumbcraft Tutorials. So in our last tutorial we went over nodes, we've gone over basic alchemy, basic golemancy, we've gone over how to make foci and how wands work to some extent. So we're about to get into some of the more advanced stuff. If you have not looked at some of the basic stuff, this may get complex for you. So fair warning. We're starting to get to the more advanced, more difficult things. Now, starting off, we're going to look at this. This is called Automated Alchemy. It can be found in your Thamanamakan in the Alchemy section, right here on the far right, just beyond the Alchemic Centrifuge. Now, we did not go over the Alchemic Centrifuge because it is just a piece of a bigger part, and I like to encourage you guys to kind of look for your own stuff. Now, once you've unlocked this in your Thamanamakan, the research is pretty simple and you're going to need a wand with 30 water, ordo, and 15 ignis. Now, why do you want this when you've already got a cauldron and all that? Well, this is going to help you with a lot of stuff and make things a lot cleaner. Not only that, but you're going to be removing a lot of the crap out of the system, as well as there's less chance for taint, which, let's just face it, Less taint is not a bad thing. Now, along with this recipe, you're going to get another one, which we're going to go into a little bit more, but this is going to be the nomadic or nomonic matrix. I don't know why I said nomadic. <laughs> Anyways, on that note, since I've already got this placed together, you're going to need a heat source, just like with the previous cauldron, but you're also going to need two alchemic constructs, which you will have learned earlier, providing you have not somehow cheated in the information ahead of time. Now, with a click of our wand, boom. Now the alchemic construct works in a very interesting way. Essentially, you're going to need a base item and you're going to be able to see a product and choose from products. Now, I've already got a couple of buffers here from the centrifuge. We're going to attach these to the side because this is how we're actually going to get our are are essentially in it's gonna make things a lot nicer long run too so we're just gonna pop these over to the side and the matrix will actually allow us to do more than one recipe at a time so let's pop this back here oh. <laughs> I might actually have to dig my way back there real quick let me grab my pickaxe and you're going to want to attach this to one of the sides. Now if you notice, I'm blatantly avoiding the front here. And the reason why is because the front is an output. You notice it's a little bit bigger than everything else. Remember how I said during our Golemancy tutorial you might want a hungry chest? Well, if there ever was a time for a hungry chest, now is that time. So let's go ahead and pop this guy off the floor. There we go. And we will stick you right here, my friend. Good job. Okay, so how does this work? Well, it works like every other bit of alchemy. Any alchemic recipe that you have previously, such as metal purification or metal transmutation, will work. In this case, we're going to do one of the more complex recipes, the Ethereal Bloom. Now, I already know a couple people who may be watching my Blightfall series are probably going, Why are you going so deep so quick? Well, fact is, is this is a good way to prove a point. This is a great way to actually show this can achieve the more complex recipes with as little mess as possible, which is exactly what we need. So, if you notice, there's only one thing we can do here. So, we're going to need a couple of things. Now, first off, we're going to need some Herba, Magic, Sano, and Taint. So... Let's see, we've got some taint up here, which thankfully in Blightfall is readily available. We're going to need... Oh, what do I have here? Oh, I've got Herba. Haha! We'll grab our Herba, throw that in there. Then we need some Sano. We have that right here. And finally, we're going to need Magic, which I happen to have a very large surplus of. I like to take the um, more empty bottle if I have one. Okay. And create. 
And something is going horribly wrong. <laughs> I actually don't think we need the buffers. I'm so used to putting buffers on everything now. So let's go ahead and do this. Okay, the air is going through. Now we've got our magic. Followed by our Sano. And you can actually see over the top there what's going in. And finally, our taint. So we're going to cancel the recipe because we don't want it screwing up. And you'll notice we now have an ethereal bloom. Thankfully, because the piping is hooked into this, it doesn't seem like any suction problems seem to occur when you have certain elements. Now, if you notice, it popped up one and then that was the end of the recipe. This will not be true for other things because as you continue on and on and on, you're going to find yourself in an interesting situation where you can create a multitude of things. Like in this case, we can create a lot of thomium. So if we do this, it's just going to keep popping up thomium until it runs out of the acquired materials to do so. We're just going to let that go on through. And if you notice, we've kind of boiled down our stuff. Let's make just one more, and I will break my bottle, get my other magic bottle, and let's put that right there, plop, and there we go. And if you notice, it's taking no more essentia than what it requires, which is just wonderful. That is pretty much the basics, but I figure it might be a good time for me to actually show you the alchemic centrifuge and show you how to actually use that, because that's going to get important a lot later on, and you're going to really want to know how to use that. So, let me put away all my other stuff, and we're going to want this tag. We want to keep track of certain stuff. Uh, let's keep track of taint. Last thing we want to do is lose track of that. Ugh. Okay. So the alchemic centrifuge is going to be another big one for you. And if you notice, you're going to have some more difficult recipes for obvious reasons. In some cases, you may need the human aspect, but you don't have anything that has, well, human in it. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to make some human. And the way you do that is you're going to need something that's going to have the aspect already in it. In this case, we're going to go ahead and use greed. And what this is going to do is it's going to boil it down. And boom, we've already got some human. We got some human. And we got some hunger. So, I'm just going to let that kind of spin off there. Now, it's going to keep doing its job until it can't do it anymore. But thanks to our buffer, this holds a couple of different aspects at the same time. It's great when you're using your Amblick. It's also great when you're using your Centrifuge. Now all we need to do is attach the bottles. In this case, let's go ahead and attach... We want to attach Hunger first so we don't mess up a bottle. And we want Hunger first. And then on the other side, we want human. And boom, we've broken down the element into a couple of its base forms. Now, what you need to remember is every aspect is made of two parts. And eventually, it all boils down to the basics. Now, once you get a hold of all the basics and you understand, you know, how to make them all, there you go. If you need a bit of reference, your Thamanomicon is always one to help in the Aspects of Magic tab on the very top. So here you can actually see what everything's made of. Now, let's say we didn't need hunger anymore. I mean, that's a pretty awkward thing to have. I'm not sure how many recipes even use that. Well, let's break down that. Put hunger down here. And we'll have that break down. Ooh, that's a nice one. Okay, what's the other aspect? There we go, void. Or emptiness depending on how you want to look at it. Human, hunger. So now we have these two aspects that we can kind of pull off of. I seem to be out of jars, so I think I might end up having to leave those there for a little bit. 
which is kind of sucky, but they're not going anywhere. They're not going to expire. They're just going to sit there for a while. Now, on that note, I hope this tutorial has actually been helpful for you. I wish I could have shown you more with this particular um, setup, because thanks to this matrix, we could actually do several recipes. I'm sure you saw the little three over here, and that's pretty much the max number of recipes we can do with just one of these matrix. The more matrix you attach, the more recipes you can do, which is quite useful. And if you notice, the cleanup is oh so nice. On that note, I want you guys to hopefully tell me what you guys think. Was this tutorial helpful? If yes, thumbs up would be appreciated. If no, tell us in the comments. We need to get better at this, and the only way we're going to do that is if you guys help us by telling us what we did wrong or possibly how we can improve. Aside from that, if you guys want to see more tutorials, feel free to hit subscribe or just check out our playlist. It's always appreciated to see a new face. Maybe you want to check out our series as well, which we are doing a Blightfall series if you guys haven't noticed. In which case, hopefully you enjoyed the shenanigans. Aside from that, I hope you guys take care, stay safe, stay well, and just remember, every aspect is made up of two separate parts. Keeping in mind which parts are which is going to be what's going to keep you in good shape and allow you to progress further and further in Thongcraft. Take care and stay well, everybody. Bye. Pistachios. Nom, 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 nom. Okay. Well, that was fun.